Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey, for anyone who is new here and joining me today, thank you so much. Um, if you don't already, let's get all the boring stuff out of the way. If you don't already, please follow me on my Instagram. Um, my handle, I will leave it here. Um, it's just a bit more interactive and fun for me because it's not just me and um, a camera. Right, so on to today's video. Um, I have had a few requests from people to do a bridal look and I thought, well, seeing as we are finally in spring because there's actually sunshine outside today, I thought, yeah, I'll do my uh, my bridal look today. So what I'm going to do is recreate my wedding makeup that I wore on the day and just share a few things that I did to make sure that it stayed in place all day. Um, I'm going to see if I can. I think I will know how to do this, but I'm going to insert some pictures of the makeup that I did um, here, but I can't remember exactly everything that I used because it was four years ago. So um, I'm doing this from memory because I haven't looked at the pictures recently, but I, I have a quite a good idea of what I was looking for on the day. So that's what we're going to do today. Firstly, let's get on to skin. So, ah, just to um, talk about this um, sunscreen, because I mentioned this in my last video and then I saw all the comments and I was like, oh, I didn't explain myself properly. So yes, I do know that there are um, sunscreens that you can get that are sheer, but if you were using a retinol treatment, um, an esthetician that I spoke to said that you need to use a physical um, sunscreen and not a chemical one. So the physical ones are the ones that have the tint because it's the, is it titanium dioxide or? Yeah, oh, I remembered something, wow. The titanium dioxide inside it would protect your skin from the sun. Now the the chemical ones, they do work, but they're not as um, stable and they often need um, reapplying, but most people don't reapply them. So um, that's why she said to use one like this. So if there's a physical one that people know of, which I doubt there will be unless they are tinted for like brown skin, they're always going to leave this cast on the face, on the face, on the face. But that's fine. On your wedding day, you're going to wear makeup anyway, so you might be outside if you're lucky and it may even be sunny. It wasn't my day. I remember it was 27 degrees the day that I got married. June the 21st, 2014, and it was a lovely day. And I was really um, extra. I did my mum's makeup that day, and I did mine and my sister's. I'm a little bit of a control freak, so I was like, I'll take care of these. And then one of my really good friends did my bridesmaids for me, so that was a really nice gift from her. It's kind of cool when you've got lots of friends that are makeup artists. That gift comes in handy when you're getting married. And today I'm going to use a primer and I can't remember if I actually used one on my wedding day but this is one thing that I would recommend if you're doing your own makeup or you're having someone do it for you on the day, please make sure you use a primer, especially if you have an oily to combination skin because all the smiling and dancing and all that good stuff will make you get shiny faster. So I'm using the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Primer just on um, my nose and the sides of my nose and my forehead because that's generally the places that I tend to get shiny. Then I'm definitely going to do some colour correction today. So this is the usual burnt coral, I think. Yes, it is called burnt coral. And just do a tiny bit around my mouth. I'm going to try a different brush today. I'm taking the Real Techniques 300 brush. I love it for powder, but I think it might be good for liquids and creams too. So let's see. I'm just going to buff this around my mouth. Next, I'm going to go and do my brows. On the day, I remember I used... Oh, actually, on my wedding day, I had red hair. So I had red eyebrows um, on my wedding day. And it was um, a brow product that I used to actually mix up myself. And people would ask me all the time what it was that I was using in my brows. But I mixed up like lots of powders and creams and put them in a microwave and made this little like brow pomade that I used to draw my brows on. You'll see in the picture I had um, bright red hair and red eyebrows on the day. So it definitely wasn't this, but now I've gone back to my natural hair color. I'm gonna use my NYX brow pencil in espresso. Just gently fill in my brows and then take the spoolie end again and just brush everything through. It's good if you do this, because then you can see if you've got any more gaps that you need to fill in. And I can see one just there. Next, I'm going to move on to my concealer. 
And on the date, I remember I used Studio... Gosh, what was that? No, I used Select Cover Up Concealer in NC48, but they don't make that anymore. But I'm just going to use my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer today. This is my absolute fave. I love this. So whilst that's drying on my face, I'm going to move on to my skin. I can't remember exactly what I used on my skin. It was four years ago. So I'm just going to create something that looks similar to what I had on a day. I am using my um, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in number 10. And I'm going to go back with this Real Techniques brush and see what happens. It's not designed for this, so who knows. But you know what I'm like. I never use things where they're supposed to be used. Oh, lovely. It looks really nice. I love this foundation. I really like the smell of it, which is a bit weird because I don't really like products that smell, but I like the smell of this foundation. And this foundation is also really yellow, so for this part of my face it works really well. So I seen with this brush if I'm using it for foundation it actually works better if you pat it than swiping so that's what we're going to do today I don't know why I make things hard on myself I do have a foundation brush here but I just like to try new things and this foundation has a really beautiful satiny sheen to the finish so I'd say if you've got more of an oily skin type, this may not necessarily be the one for you. If you've got like normal to combination, you can probably get away with using just a primer underneath it. I mean, like I say all the time, I'd always prefer to look shiny than look matte. So for me, this was, um, wasn't really something that I took into consideration. Yeah, I've got, I'd say like normal to a combination. I get a little bit shiny around the sides of my nose and on my forehead, but I am willing to forego having super matte skin for this finish on the foundation. Right, now we're going to move on to the perimeters of my face, which we all know are generally darker when I don't use the sunscreen. So I'm going to go back to my Bobbi Brown uh, Skin Foundation Stick. You could use the liquid if you have that, but I don't have the liquid, so I'm just going to use the stick that I have. And I'll go back to this brush and see how this works with the cream. Now with a cream it's much nicer buffing. So I'm just going to blend those two colours together. I'd say um, on your wedding day, if you're doing your makeup yourself, make sure you have tried and tested your base to see if it will stand up to the test of being worn all day because you're not really going to have the time to touch up or not even not have the time, but you don't want the stress of having to worry about does my face still look okay. So I would definitely do that. I'd also say don't try any new skin treatments or new skin products just before. Like if you're going to have facials, give yourself a couple of weeks before the actual day so that if you do get any inflammation or flare-ups, they have time to calm down before the day. Um, don't go and see a new eyebrow person. These are all things I used to tell my customers when I used to work um, in MAC and even when I have my private clients. They're like, what should I do before the day? And I'm like, nothing. Don't do anything new because we don't want any horrible surprises on the day. So... It's really important that, you know, if you get your brows threaded or waxed, you see the same person that usually does them for you. Don't go and try a new person. Um, same thing with skincare. Like, I know we all want to look our best on our wedding day, but that is not the time to try out new acids and new serums and peels. And you need to give your skin, I'd say, at least three to four weeks time to kind of settle to make sure on the day that you're at your best. So that's my recommendation. Oh, look at the skin. It looks so... Sorry, guys. I know I say this, but... And I don't want it to come across big-headed, but sometimes I'm genuinely, like, amazed at how my skin looks with makeup on, especially because I don't really wear foundation, to be honest. Hardly ever. And now that I've finished my skin, I'm going to go in and add in a bit more definition. I think this is a really important step in any makeup that's going to be photographed is um, the camera has the power to make things look a lot flatter and a lot less dimensional than they actually are. So that's why I'm going to do a tiny bit of contouring today. So I'm taking my Bobbi Brown Stick Foundation 
in my Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation. And I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of contour on my cheekbones, on the jawline. And I like to do just in here, and then definitely around the perimeter of my forehead. Then I'm taking the 110 face shape brush um, from Zoeva and I'm just using this to blend my contour into the rest of my foundation. Then I'm taking the brush I use for my foundation and I'm just sweeping that over everything just to make sure it's all really lovely and blended in. Then I'm taking a 224 just to blend in my concealer. I'm taking some more of my NARS Radiant Creamy um, Concealer in Armand and I'm using a small um, brush from MAC, a 228, and I'm just going to use this to sculpt out my brows a little bit more. And just blend down the edges of the concealer. Now I'm moving on to eyeshadow and I think it's really important for eye makeup, even if you don't wear a lot of colour, to make sure that you, you know, wear a decent mascara, use liner around the eyes, even if you don't want to use a gel or a pencil, just use a powder, shadow or something just to frame the eye because it's really easy for them to disappear um, if you don't have much on. So I always say to my brides, let me push the eye makeup as far as they're comfortable in terms of definition because it really, really matters. It makes a massive difference to the final pictures. I know it's um, equally as important to feel comfortable in real life, so I never take them too far, but it's not like your usual routine. It's a special day, it's a special type of makeup, and you need to remember that when, if you are doing it yourself. On the day, I remember I had really um, pinky tones on my eyes because my bridesmaids all wore blush and I had really beautiful peonies and roses in my bouquet so I really wanted a pinky eye look and I remember I practiced, I did a trial on myself. Trials are really important if you're booking an artist um, just to make sure that you're comfortable with their hand and what they're going to offer you on the day but I did a trial on myself just to give myself a bit more of an idea of what I wanted to do and um, I did a super pinky, sparkly eye makeup, so I'm going to recreate that for you today, to the best of my memory, that is. Okay, this is just saddle eyeshadow that I'm using just to put in a really soft crease. And I'm using a, or I used, because I finished, a 228 brush from Zoeva. Then I'm taking a paint pot in the colour Laying Low, and I'm just going to use my fingers to put this on my actual eyelid. Paint pots are really useful because they help to um, stop your eyeshadow from creasing. So if that's something that you find that you have a problem with, definitely look into paint pots. Lots of different brands do them. This one is from MAC, but Bobbi Brown do them, Kiko do them, Laura Mercier do like sticks as well. So that's definitely something to add onto your shopping list. Nobody wants creasing eyeshadow or eyeshadow that's disappearing halfway through their wedding day. And now that's in place, I'm just going to go in and reinforce my um, socket a bit more. So I'm taking a tiny bit of Embark eyeshadow from MAC and I'm literally just going to blend that through my crease here. I'm being... Uh, over ambitious, I definitely need a smaller mirror for this part of the makeup just to make sure I'm putting everything on in the right place and blending it all through properly. And then I'm going back with the other brush that I used and just blending over the top to make sure those two colours really merge well together. There's a rogue brush hair there. And then I'm taking the 217 brush from MAC and I'm using a colour called Cranberry and just blending that over. Small mirror again, keep forgetting. And because it's got that quite um, light paint pot underneath it, it's going to make it stand out really nicely. And 
And I remember on the day I used chocolate brown pigment and they don't make that anymore. But I'm trying to do it as much as I can to how I did it on the day. Just to soften the pink in this part of the eye. But it's just a brown, shimmery pigment. Small mirror, small mirror. Because it was pink, but it wasn't like screaming pink from miles away. It was really subtle on the day. And blend again. Now I'm taking a 239 and I'm using some bronze eyeshadow. Just in the inner part. Was it bronze that I used? Yeah, it was. Bronze here. Yeah. And I'm going back to the 217 and I'm taking a colour called All That Glitters and I'm literally just sweeping that all over. And then back with that 239 just for the inner corner highlight here. Then I'm taking some black coal pencil just to smudge in the corner here. So literally just draw that on. And then use a little pencil brush just to blend that in. And it just gives a tiny bit more definition and dimension to the corners of the eye. Then underneath the eye, take the same brush, go back into the embark and just run it on the outside corner. I'd say the outside third of the eye. And just connect it to the top as well. Tiny bit more embark now. And just over the black pencil. Back to the cold pencil inside the waterline. Now I'm using a waterproof pencil just in case anyone cries on their wedding day. I thought I was going to cry on mine, but I was just so happy. I was like the Cheshire cat. I just spent the whole day smiling. So I went to all great lengths to secure my eye makeup and make sure that if I cried, it wouldn't move. But I didn't cry in the end. I was just too happy. And I remember on the day that I really wanted to use glitter and I did, I used some Reflex Gold, which is a really fine glitter from MAC. And I literally just pressed that onto my lid. It's really nice when sunlight catches this as well. It looks really pretty on. You don't have to do this, but I, this is what I wanted on the day. And then I'm just going to take a small brush and a mirror and just flick away any glitter that's fallen into the wrong place. If you're not that confident with glitter, I'd probably say do that before you do the lower half of your foundation so then you don't have to worry about the camera picking up these flecks of glitter. But I wasn't that fussed about it, so I did it first. Never leave glitter open. I'm closing mine right now because you don't want that catastrophe on your wedding day if you're using glitter. Right, and I remember I had um, eyeliner and so I did my mom's makeup, my sister's makeup and I had about 20 minutes to do my wedding makeup on the day because time ran away with me and I spent so much time on my mum and my sister. And I remember my eyeliner was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be but I didn't have time to fix it. It wasn't that noticeable, it's just that I'm really like, particular about things so, um, yeah, today I get to do it with the no pressure and hopefully, hopefully it'll come out good. So I'm taking a 210 brush from MAC and I am using my Maybelline Lasting Drama Gel Eyeliner and I'm going to start on my right eye first and just do this liner quickly.
and then do the same on the other eye. Hopefully this will come out even and not be a nightmare like in one of my other recent videos where oof, I was not having a good liner day. So let me just really assess this. Okay, so it's quite a high flick actually for me. Got it right this time. I'm going to take a tiny bit of the gel liner and just um, smoke out the waterline of my eyes <laughs> a bit more. Gosh, baby brain. Right, let's get a little brush. And this brush is perfect for that. It's the 310 um, liner brush from Zoeva. So I'm taking a tiny bit of the gel, working it into the brush first. And then literally just smudging in the waterline. Now onto mascara. Um, waterproof mascara is really important on your wedding day, just in case. Um, even if you don't use it every day, I would say if you're doing your wedding makeup yourself or you're having an artist do it for you, use a waterproof mascara. It's better to be safe than sorry. And um, the extended play mascara from MAC is actually water, is it waterproof? It's, I think it's water resistant, which means that when you cry, it doesn't run. Yes, it is water resistant because the waterproof ones are really difficult to take off and this one isn't. So it's water resistant. So. And the reason why it's not classified as waterproof is that you don't need a special cleanser to take it off and waterproof mascaras, most of the time you do. So, um, did I use this? I don't think I used, um, no, I think I just used In Extreme Dimension on my wedding day, but for safety, if you want, use this. So as usual, um, I do my top lashes and my bottom lashes in my extended play. And then I do my top lashes in, in Extreme Dimension. You can use the um, Extended Play Mascara as a sealer almost, as if you have a, another brand or another type of mascara that's your favorite, but you just want that waterproof safety. You can do what I do, use it underneath or use it over the top and it will, well actually no, use it over the top if you want it to stop your mascara from running. Yeah, that's pretty similar to what I look like on the day. Right, now I'm gonna go in and finesse the skin. So we know the routine, more concealer for the eye bags. What brush did I use for my concealer? Uh, it was a 224, wasn't it? And then take my brush and just blend that, concentrating it just on the dark bit here. Then for skin, I'm going to use my usual combination, and I did use this on the day, Mineralized Skin Finish in dark underneath my eyes to set my concealer, and then uh, dark deep everywhere else on my face. I'm using a Real Techniques Multitask brush just for this part. And on my wedding day, I actually used Fleur Power blush. I think it might have even been this one because it is my favorite, so. Um, because I wanted everything pinky, I used this one. So just use the same brush and just pop that on the cheekbone. Why does liner make you do that with your eyes? You notice I'm smiling, right? Just makes you do this. I love eyeliner. I love makeup in general, actually. It just makes you feel so good. Okay. Blush is on. And then for lips, I remember I had a really pinky nude lip and I'm, I also know that I mix lipsticks on the day. I am a bit of a mixer with everything in makeup so that wouldn't have surprised me. I can't remember, like I said, I can't remember exactly the ones that I use. So I'm going to try and recreate something similar. So I'm using the Bobbi Brown Luxe Lip Colour in Bobbi first. Um, 
And then I'm using creamy lip colour in Blue Raspberry on the top lip. And then blend those together. Mm. It's definitely this type of colour. Oh, that's nice. Nice little combo there. Then I'm using Plum Lip Pencil just to line my lips. Now I'm using a Barry M lip liner. I found this years ago um, when Chestnut was sold out at work and I really needed a brown liner and it's actually quite a good dupe for it. So just use that on the corners. I want a bit of an overdraw. Different scenarios. I'm somebody that Copes quite well under pressure, so I was very confident that I could do mine and my mum's and my sister's. Even if I didn't have enough time, I knew that I could still do my makeup really well on the day. If you're somebody who is not that confident or you don't wear makeup that often and you're not an artist, don't give yourself the pressure because there's nothing worse than looking back at your wedding pictures years from now and thinking I should have got someone professionally to do that for me because that I've heard that from people who I have done makeup for for events and stuff like after their wedding day and they say oh, I wish I I wish I had you I wish I had a professional on the day so if you if you can get the best artist you can afford your photos are your per permanent memory of your wedding day and you don't want that to be a miss because you try to do it yourself that's my first disclaimer. Secondly, if you are confident, then yes, follow the tips that I said prior to that little rant. Um, but uh, also be really aware about creating dimension in the face. So make sure that you have enough definition around the eyes and that your cheekbones and your whole facial structure is really enhanced in a really subtle way. Because even though I've done contour and I've got quite a lot of eye makeup on for me, because I never wear this much makeup. I really went to town on my wedding day. Um, I still look really natural and if that's something that's really important to you make sure you practice so you get the balance right because it is a really fine line between looking really sculpted and then looking like overly contoured so practice that um i think that's it i think that they're all the tips that i have for oh another one bear in mind the climate that you're getting married in so if you're going somewhere really hot you know, maybe you're getting married in Santorini or Nice or somewhere, you know, and you could be getting married in Nigeria or Ghana or wherever you're getting married. Make sure that your makeup will work for that climate. It's all well and good at working in London or, I don't know, Ontario in Canada, but then you get married in Brazil where it's really humid and the makeup doesn't work. Spend some time doing some research and find some products that are going to work really well in the environment that you're getting married in. And I think that's it. This was really fun actually, because obviously I got married, not obviously, but I got married four years ago and I haven't worn my wedding day makeup since. So it was really nice just to sit here and recreate it. And it is actually bringing back lots of memories of the day. And yeah, it was really lovely. I, I had a really nice time, but I was super, super, I was like one of the most chilled brides you'd ever meet. So many things went wrong on the day that nobody else knew, but like I had like wardrobe malfunctions and cake issues, but I was just so happy. So um, if anyone's getting married anytime soon, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you on my next one. Bye.